Now at five, from the courtroom to the crime scene, jurors going classroom by classroom, touring the aftermath of the Parkland School Massacre, then back to the courthouse. We have a void in our lives that will never be filled. He was an extraordinary man living an ordinary life. As loved ones read their victim impact statements. The last birthday party I had was for my 16th and Peter's 15th birthdays. He only had 15 birthdays. Before prosecutors rested their case in the sentencing trial. The jury will now have a couple of weeks off before the defense starts presenting its case. And it's time away they may need after hearing the last of the victim impact statements and touring the crime scene this morning. CBS 4's Joan Murray was selected by random draw to tour the 1200 building as part of a media pool after the jurors left. And Joan, you have covered this story since it happened. What was it like for you to be inside that building today? Well, there are a lot of terms being bandied about, including surreal, and it was also as if you were in a time warp. Things were a lot like they were on that day, students leaving in a hurry. And what really strikes you about being in that building is uh, just everything still as it was February 14th, 2018. I'm talking about it was Valentine's Day, so there were Valentine's on desk. There were unwrapped boxes of candy. There were balloons. But we decided we only had a limited amount of time. 30 minutes, we were told, 10 minutes each floor. So we wanted to use that time. Also, we had to take notes to share with the rest of the reporting pool. So it was very concentrated. But I can tell you, entering that building, the first thing you didn't notice was all the glass around because the shooter managed to shoot out nearly every glass pane of every classroom school door. And these are panes of glass about uh, a foot wide and three feet long. And as you enter the hallway, you see this glass everywhere leading out of the room, into the room, all over the room. Um, before that, we were in the actual stairwell. Uh, the shooter went into as soon as he got into the building, and that's where he loaded. Another place we saw a stuffed animal on the floor and also a discarded Valentine's bag possibly by a student who was running from the scene. When you get a full look at that first floor, a lot of carnage. Remember, 11 people died there. There were nine students and two staff members. Three students died in the hallway, and without being too graphic, you could see outlines of blood. The blood stains are still there from where three students died in the hallway. Also, as you go down the first floor hallway, it is where athletic coach Chris Hickson rushed in, tried to do what he could to help, but was taken down by a bullet. And then, as we learned from a surveillance video later, the shooter came by and shot him again. So the first floor, a lot of damage, a lot of carnage. The other thing you really notice when you go into these classrooms is how everything was left as is. So I'm talking about you see binders open, literally math problems that were in progression there sitting out. In another room, we saw essays on desk, class assignments from the teachers sitting on the desk. So you know the suddenness of it. And as we have learned, this all took only a matter of about seven minutes. So just picture yourself being in these classrooms. The other thing I really noticed was the classrooms are not very large. Uh, last time maybe you were in school, if you try to remember back. So these were very narrow spaces. These students had to try to escape the bullets and try they did. Unfortunately, some try as they might were no match for that powerful weapon. Going on, uh, we went on to the second floor. No one passed away on that floor. However, the shooter did take out some windows. Along the way, we saw some bulletin boards. One that struck me, it was the class of 2018 graduates. So uh, those pictures had been put up there. That is just as you make the turn to go up to the, the stairwell to the third floor. Re again, remember, we were following the path of the shooter, but only had a few minutes on each floor. On the third floor, again, you can just imagine the terror. Um, the hallway is just filled with blood stains and also bullet holes. Um, this is where uh, students died. 
This is where a teacher died. Scott Beagle, the geography teacher, um, he fell at his doorway, blocked the room. Um, his door uh, window was not taken out. Um, the shooter chose not to go in, even though there were students cowering in that area. And then further on uh, down another wall where uh, Peter Wang, who, who was shot repeatedly, and uh, where his body came to rest. And then there is a stairwell where Jamie Guttenberg passed away. And the other thing we noticed on the third floor, uh, we were allowed into the teacher's lounge. Now, as you may remember, this is where the shooter went and he tried to shoot out some windows in that teacher's lounge. Uh, we saw five bullet holes. He did not manage to break the glass, which was uh, hurricane proof glass. So he did not manage to do that. But out the window is where you see the ball fields. And that is where uh, people were exiting by that point. And the belief is he might have tried to shoot some people trying to flee the school. After that, the shooter left that teacher's lounge, went through the stairwell, and that is where Jamie Guttenberg had passed away. He left his gun and his vest, and we noticed on the floor there was actually like police marking actually showing where he left his gun and the, uh, the marking where he left his vest, as we know now. He left out of the building, and then uh, we, we saw on the outside the route he took, and then he was captured uh, about an hour later. So as you have said, the jury preceded us. Uh, we got to see the jury go in. They had much more time to spend in there. But I think after sitting through these weeks of testimony, I think the uh, amount of carnage, the deaths, who these people were, what these students confronted was really driven home today on this jury visit. And of course, our, our experience being able to see what they saw. Joan, you have described this so perfectly, and you're a journalist and as good as they get, and you know how to detach yourself from the emotion of a story and compartmentalize, but I don't know how you found the strength as a person to go in there to this building that has been trapped in time for four years. Uh, what are the emotions that went through you? We don't have too much time, but how are you doing right now? I, I'm doing fine as everyone, or you may or may not know, journalists are just trained to be objective. So when we go in, there is a, a, a bit of a wall, but we are human like everyone else. And it, you, you, you feel, I can say, the, the, the spirit of these people and the, the terror, what it must have been like being trapped in those classrooms, especially those poor students trapped in the hallway and to see the stains, the bullet holes in the wall in a corner and how they must have been cowering. And they fought for their lives. You know, sadly, many did not survive. Yeah, that, that's the feeling I think that the uh, prosecution uh, would like the uh, jury members to feel as well. Joan, thank you very much.